Hey everybody, uh, Jim Chester here. I am uh, with DC to be Gabriel Cassetta. He is out there in Spartanburg, South Carolina at Sherman College of Chiropractic. And I am here in Grand Junction, which is the Grand Valley on the Western Slope of Colorado, which I like to say it's where no one lives. And I moved here to hear the birds cheap, chirp. So <laughs> as as I go through the, the introductions, uh, Gabriel DC to be, which you'll be a doctor of chiropractic in how long? Um. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, 2020, <laughs> so not too long, not too long. Okay, so you're you're coming up on the midway of education then? Uh, a little bit past it. I'm about to go into uh, an outpatient clinic or seeing real people, not just students. It'll be exciting. <laughs> It'll be an exciting process. Awesome. Well, talking to students and talking to you, um, I do want to recognize our sponsor today, and that is chiropracticjobsonline.com. And if you guys are looking to get placed into a chiropractic job, uh, reach out to Dan Brown at chiropracticjobsonline.com and uh, see how he might be able to help you out with his services. Um, so let's reflect back into uh, you. I know that we are about uh, 30 minutes into just chit-chatting before we got on to hitting the live button. I know we left a lot of good stuff on the cutting room floor, but um, let's talk about chiropractic journeys. I know that that's one of the big uh, topics of, you know, where you're at right now is your chiropractic journey. So let's talk a little bit about um, how you pick chiropractic and the big why behind it. Um, so, so I know so chiropractic picked me so long loss um i was originally planning on becoming a medical doctor and i i was in jamaica um and i got to stay with a bunch of monks there and it was, it was really because what they would do is every morning they would wake up early get in the different centers and we would help the poorest of the poor in kingston jamaica like the slums of jamaica people would live in their trash it was a rough sight to see, you know, people would like abandon babies, like it was crazy. But what these, uh, what these brothers would do is they would, you know, pick up anybody that was, you know, needing any kind of health care, even though it was rudimentary, um, pick up children, pick up old people, you know, anybody that would, that needed, they would tend to them. Actually, that was at, at 17, uh, my parents were like, no, don't go. It's dangerous out there. And I was like, no, I have to do this. You know, it was like a calling. Um, so with that experience, I, I wanted to learn more about medicine and health. Um, so, so I went to school. I got my Bachelor of Science in Biology, um, was gearing up to go to medical school. I had also done uh, EM medic type stuff. Um, I also worked as a pharmacy technician, so I was, I was familiar with the drug, all the procedures, the splinting, emergency type stuff, and and so I I worked for, for a good while, same time, two full time both, and I got to know patients, know uh, people there in like a real world setting, you know, doing the real thing, <laughs> and I just I kept seeing people get sicker. And you know it's, it's hard when you see somebody get sick and you with them, and like you just keep seeing their health go like this. Um, I had gotten into healthcare to help people get better because I wanted I wanted to be able to take my knowledge and go back to these different mission trips, like these places like Jamaica, and help people get better. But I wasn't seeing those results. Like I I wanted the results to bring it back. You know. Um, so like, I kind of had like this, like kind of rediscovering process where I was like, something about this isn't working. You know, I, I don't know what it is, but I want it to work. There's gotta be a way to make health go this way, not this way. Um, and so that's when I, that's when I discovered other things. Uh, I discovered nutrition and that with, with applying it to my own life. I saw myself get better about things because um, I, I used to get migraines constantly. Um, I literally, I would have to be one of those people that had to pop a pill every day just to be able to function because I had such crazy pain going on, like like full full migraine. Um, and then, so I started hearing about chiropractic, and then I I had some friends that were chiropractors, 
and they basically let me be a CA with them for a while and I started getting care. And then, so I started getting better, like that would relieve my migraine so I didn't have to take a pill. I was like, huh, so the pill isn't what fixes it. There's something else going on, you know? So I started learning about chiropractic. Uh, one of my biggest influencers for wanting to be a chiropractor myself was Liam Schubel. So we go way back. If you look on the Facebook page, like it's me and him. When I first met him, that's that's the picture. But um, so yeah, so I, I kept progressing in my journey. Um, and then I went to I went to chiropractic school. I started there and I started learning more and started getting different kinds of care. Um, started getting network and a bunch of other things. Um, started off with Gonstead, uh, diversified, like all these different techniques. And like I tried them all. You know, I I just wanted to experience them to know what it feels like, you know, because it's like before you can tell a patient, you know, hey, this is going to work, you have to know that it works for yourself. So you have to come at it with that perspective too. So, um, yeah, it, it really did choose me because that, that I don't get migraines anymore. Like, that's crazy, you know, like, whereas a few years ago, maybe like four years ago, I had to take a pill every day, which isn't good, you know, damages your liver. But with this method, it's way better. And you're not only your health, but your life starts to do this. And I've seen it not only with myself, but with other people too. So like I knew that, yes, this is like a confirmation. I'm on the right path. So and I, I still fully believe that. Well, some of the things you're saying there, Gabriel, make a lot of sense to me. And they probably make a lot of sense to our audience that's out there watching. Um, and I, I know that uh, I, I had a discussion earlier today with Dr. Alex Vedan on the opiate crisis, but also on the uh, opiate solution. And yes. uh, chiro chiropractic is firmly uh, placed to become um, the answer to many people's concerns right now. And like you said, it's not the pill that's going to change the trajectory of your health. It's the self identity and it's making the positive changes with the chiropractic uh, mantra of eating right, thinking right, getting exercise and taking care of your nervous system by getting adjusted. And I yeah. think that that's something even young professionals like you at your, your pivotal moment of like advancement with your life and career could have been stymied and you could have maybe not had the opportunity of finding your career and your path and the future that you wanted based on being sick because you didn't know what the solutions were. Yeah. And that's, that, that was the ironic part to me. Cause I, you know, I was like learning all the stuff about health. Yeah. I was in terrible health myself. I'm like, how does that make any sense until I learned the right way, which is more of like the chiropractic building yourself up mentality versus just like keeping you at a stagnant level, you know, just barely lives. And that's what medicine really wants to do. Just keep you alive, but not go beyond that. But, you know, I made this other point earlier, Gabriel, is it's not us against them. It's us all in this together. No, no. So, so, yes. I mean, the, there, there is a positioning to say that, Hey, if I were to have like this uh, need for an EMT, bless their hearts for being specialists that save my life. Yeah. Um, if I yeah. do have a need to get onto something that's going to uh, patch me through something like, you know, worst case scenarios. Yes, I do want to have something to help patch me through that worst case scenario. Um, but right, when I yeah. thought when I, when I thought about me dedicating my my time and interest and voice to chiropractic, I said, well, why is chiropractic such a golden goose for the future? And it has mm -hmm. been it has been around for 120 plus years. But chiropractic is the golden goose of our era right now. And I said to him, you know, one of the things that's echoed through the hallways of chiropractic conferences for decades now is there's not a better time than now to be a chiropractor and I would say to anybody out there that they're that's so true right now it doesn't yeah. matter the student debt that you guys get it doesn't matter the uh, long schooling that you guys go through it doesn't matter because the outcome is becoming a chiropractor right. and that that to me is like some you know tremendous accomplishment and I know one of the questions I had for you on that is what is it like to become the first doctor in your family and to become a chiropractor at that um it's very humbling because uh, my my parents actually I was actually born in Argentina and my my parents were born there as well they had me and then when I was very very young we immigrated to the United States so I'm like you know that that first generation after the immigration took place um, so to be able to do that within just one generation is kind of a big deal, sort of, you know, like if you think about it, 
um, because like prior to that, you know, I, if you look back on my my family's history, they tended they tended to be farmers. It's uh, it's like to go from farmer to doctor is like the full <laughs> spectrum almost. It seems like you know. Yeah, and you, so, and, yeah, you're, and you're joining a really uh, prestigious career and being a doctor. I made this point earlier too: is doctors are one percent of the world population. And to know that chiropractors are even a smaller segment of that, um, it's very special oh. to be in that profession of being a chiropractor because I do think that the the, the choices that you make today have uh, impact on your future tomorrow. But being the doctor now, your choices today are having an impact on millions of lives because now you have now you have the power of having the authority to take care of people and have certainty in what you do. And I think that that's a really important step for any DC to be out there that's watching this is to know that, you know, you are stepping across a threshold of excellence and you are stepping across into the threshold of service. And you are the master of the give, love, serve, science, philosophy, art, and all those things are side of you and now you become the doctor and uh i think edison said yeah. it the best is becoming the doctor of the future but now i've heard it said you're the doctor of today that's true that's true and i love that you mentioned serving because like you know going back to my story the whole purpose of me learning all this was to serve and it still is to serve um and it's interesting how like you know i guess the universe or god just kind of gives you what you need so looking, you know, maybe when I was in that moment of like pain back then, I would I would have said, oh, why is why is this happening to me? But now I see the gift in that pain to where now I've learned how to overcome that and I can help other people do the same. And that's the biggest blessing, you know. And I, I learned this from Tony Robbins' son. I went to uh, one of his uh, seminars this summer, Jarek Robbins, and he had us nice. all chant. He had us all chanting this mantra. Um, mm -hmm. I used the person I used to be is back there, and now I can go forward. And it's important to remember who you were and and where what you experienced. But it's also important to appreciate the days that we're given and to say, "I'm going mm -hmm. that way now." And I think that that's an empowering step for, for somebody to find a career and become a doctor. Yeah. I mean, that was a challenge for me because like, like I, like I mentioned, actually I had wanted to be a doctor since I was 12 medical doctor. So that, that was the vision that I had, but then life kind of changed it to another direction. And I'm, I'm glad that, that it did because this is my passion. Like this is really like what I want to do. And, I'm super excited. Like you have no idea. <laughs> well, I, I know that we're going to go down a few more rabbit trails with each other on this yeah. interview. And I know one of those trails is you talking about um, your experience on mission trips and how that had an impact on your life. Yeah. So I, speaking of more recently, I went um, on a mission trip with uh, Peter Morgan to Dominican Republic in Haiti. And that was, that was very interesting because it kind of like tied it all together. Cause like, I got into it with mission trips and then I went on a chiropractic mission trip and I was like, yes, this is perfect. Like I can, I can go out there. I can serve people. It doesn't matter how much money they have. It just matters that they're a human being and I can help make their life better. If, if I can make just one person's life better then it was all worth it. All, mm -hmm. all those years of going to school, all the sacrifice, all the debt, all that, it was worth it if they can make that one person's life better. So it was, it was so amazing. And I, I actually loved Haiti. It, it was the people there were just amazing, like the most loving people you've ever met. So I would definitely recommend going there and hanging out with him. That's really cool. Yeah. And Dr. Peter Morgan, he's been one of the episodes of the Cairo Hustle podcast and uh, what he's oh, doing. He? Oh, so cool. I, I, I think he's almost to like his hundredth mission trip that he's done. I don't know the span of time that he's done him in, but I think it's, uh, it's pretty he's impressive. I think it's pretty impressive. Yeah, he's such a great guy. I think yeah, he he's caused a ripple effect in humanity. He's caused yes. one person one person decided to do something and to brand it the right way, to get support the right way, and to build uh, other people's lives up through it. Not just the people mm -hmm. that he, you go and serve, but the people that are serving. And you know, sometimes this, the 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 person serving becomes a servant because of the lessons that they're taught, like you're saying. And that you should go and just meet these people and and to, to get to know what this culture provides and how loving certain people are. And if we have to think about it as this human uh, biome that we live in, 
and that yeah. you know the people down there the reason that they are the way they are is because of culture matters and if chiropractic culture matters then we have to learn how to um, integrate that into society and to make that culture something that we're really proud of yeah exactly and i think uh speak going back to what we were talking about before about collaboration i feel like one of the greatest one of the greatest blessings about the newer generations of chiropractors coming out the millennials collaborative overall it's just part of our culture so instead of saying oh this technique is better than this technique we say hey look at this technique it's really cool look at this other technique it's really and then you just kind of you put them together because it's it's chiropractic you know it's it's all beautiful and and, it all and, works and what i've also noticed is that because of there's such a strong commitment to chiropractic seminars and chiropractic events is that now the chiropractic students are becoming in union with each other at a different level than yes. what was at one point uh seen in the chiropractic profession i think that chiropractic students now have more access to each other because there is such a deep pocket of chiropractic events that they can go to and they can interact and one of the the you know the tenets of that is to bring the future leaders together and to have them see what's happening now to where we can make an impact in the future because it's always that person that's in the back of the room that's watching will be eventually the one up on the stage and I think that that's the, the the transition of excellence. And I think that's when you start immersing yourself with the leaders in the profession and you start going and meeting the other people at those events, that's the future. And that's really yes. why I want to bring young DCs like you on because you are the future and you are the next decision maker and you are the next one to link arms with your brothers and sisters to make a better chiropractic profession. And whether that's serving out there in a foreign country and doing mission trips or whether that's making the most of it in your backyard and become the best, most certain caregiver you can become. I think that that's the other part of the story. And I think yeah. that, and, and, you know, Sherman's doing a great job of uh, educating the young and bringing people together. Um, like you said earlier, um, the other chiropractic colleges are bringing people out that are uh, they th that are going to change the, the landscape. And it's not you that might change it, but it's the two tracks behind you that might change it, you know? Mm. Uh, I've got some big plans, so we'll, we'll see who does that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, and a lot of it is based on technology because, like, another thing that we mentioned before is that, you know, there's kind of been this gap in in chiropractic, if you compare it to medicine, where they're they're like way up here with technology, and we're like, you know, there's we're we're pretty good, but there, there's a lot of room for error or a lot of room for progress, and I think that assessment and marketing, um, but with sharing and all that, if, when you put that all together you're really focusing on the core tenets of chiropractic and how to make it better. And that's really the future. Yeah. And I know that I, we, one of the discussions we had was how uh, communications change in the conversation around chiropractic, but also the way that we uh, advance with technology around chiropractic and not just for like what goes inside the clinics, but what goes outside of the clinic of how we use what we have on our, our hands as resources to make the impact. And I think that yeah. that's one of the things that chiropractors are all out there watching right now. You have all the resources at your hand to be your own media agent. You have mm -hmm. the, the resources at your own hand to become your own megaphone. And I think that that's one of the things, though, is um, the, the chiropractic profession has to be consistent with the brand, the vision, the mission, and the marketing. And exactly. once we all start speaking the same language, it's not us against each other anymore either, or it's not us against them. It's all of us right. together for an outcome, exactly. which is which is a better healthcare model. And I think that that's yeah. where the that's where the puck is going. Concierge care at a healthcare model, and not sick care patching it up systems. Exactly. And, and there's the, there's also the greater vision of, you know, why are we doing what we're doing? It's, and it's really BJ's big idea. You know, if, if you can basically have a society or a world where people aren't subluxated, imagine how much better that would be. You know, imagine what we could accomplish. You know, we could, you know, expand beyond the stars at that point, you know. But living at this level right here, which is very low because of subluxation, and, you know, we're, have, we're having all these wars and all these health crises, if we were up here, we would we would be thinking completely different. We would be thinking more expansion, more collaboration, more growing. And I think that's where humanity, like in the big picture, like you were saying, like in the future, that's where humanity needs to go.
So we really are the future. We're perfectly positioned to do that, which is the next step of humanity. And, you know, I think that, you know, having the idea that chiropractors have their rightful place in caregiving, um, it's it's without a doubt. Um, that's why that you're you were interested in it when you found it. And that's why I, I knew that the more that we went down uh, this path of pharmacology and the way that people were getting more sick and not better, that eventually chiropractic was going to be the sole positioned healthcare practitioner to be able to manage the healthcare crisis which we're in right now. And that's why it's important for every chiropractor to have certainty and self-esteem and knowing that what they can do once they cross that threshold of whether it's 10 years of being a doctor, whether it's your first day in practice or whether you've been in practice for 40 years, you guys have the ability to deliver the goods to people. And, uh, you know, and I think that that's a really cool uh, group of people that you're graduating into. Yeah, no, I, I totally have so much respect for, the, the, the shoulders of the giants that I, you know, ride on, but essentially, um, and you're one of them too, brother. I appreciate oh, you. Thank you, man. Um, I, I remember our first uh, chance to meet, uh, you're just a, a, a newbie into the Sherman program. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, we, I, I was out there speaking on chiropractic marketing and I might've even showed our movie. I don't remember what time yeah, it was, yeah. out there, but, but we showed our, we showed our chiropractic film and the end of the film is, is what you said. What, what would happen if, uh, you told your neighbor about chiropractic or the person in front of you at the grocery store, you told them about chiropractic. And what if yeah. uh, we shared the big idea with one city? What would happen? What would happen if we told the story to, you know, the big idea to a whole country? Now we have a whole country under chiropractic care. Now what if we got really big on this big idea and we did expect miracles mm -hmm. and we got this whole world under chiropractic care? What would be possible? And I think, yeah. I think we have to really drill down into what can really be possible in this utopia of chiropractic if everybody was getting checked and adjusted for vertebral subluxation from cradle to grave. Exactly. And actually, I, I love that you mentioned expecting miracles. Uh, your, your state, it was awesome. And um, I also heard a couple of stories about how something similar happened um, where Donny Epstein got together a bunch of in, from uh, Formica, which is, I believe, uh, it's a, it's in Europe somewhere, this island. Um, and basically, there was a, I believe it was a monk or a priest that basically asked the government to send all the all the deplorables essentially uh, to bring them to the island, and then uh, they all received chiropractic care. And it's amazing how the island transformed because then they started to build and develop the island and, and it just became this beautiful place. So like I, for me, that's very symbolic of what chiropractic can do for the whole world. You know, that's, <laughs> that's like a little small taste of heaven. So, and what's to come. So if, you know, it's BJ's big idea is not just a big idea. It's something that can actually happen. And we, it's our, it's our sacred duty to make it happen. We just need to pay attention and be good stewards of the information and the talents. Yes. And yes. I think that that's the most important thing is to protect the sacred trust, deliver the goods and, uh, you know, find the fair exchange for what you deserve and what humanity needs. And I think that that's a, a big, you know, internal dialogue that the chiropractor has to continuously ask themselves as to what do I deliver and what is the the outcome of that? And what is the value exchange for that? And I think that yes. that's been something that, you know, we've had to uncover for a long time now with the chiropractor as to what is, you know, my business strategy? What is my business model? What is my overhead? What do I train people on? How do I build a, a system that's efficient and effective? I mean, we have to take this thing to a whole nother like transference and it's not just getting yeah. that diploma, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it's, it's not enough to just get your diploma. It's just not, it's just it's not. If you want to be successful and you want to help people and you want to change the world, you have to do stuff like that you know like and that's why i love that you mentioned uh the teachings that you were going to start doing that they, that's pivotal because i well i remember before i got into chiropractic myself i did work for um a chiropractor for a little while as as a marketer and you know doing like screenings and stuff like that and that was way more challenging than i ever thought and i think a lot of students that are in chiropractic school maybe don't have that experience maybe they just assume that it's going to be easy like i did when i when i first tried before i was into chiropractic school and it was it was a challenge 
It really was. Um, so for you to be able to to be so awesome as to you know compile all that information with years of experience and to just like distill it into like all right, this is how this works really well. That's very needed. Well, I I, I kind of went to the direction of biohacking the 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 system, and I took that job that no one else wanted, and I figured yeah. out how to how to make that job glorious. And yeah. uh, for 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 years there, uh, uh, Gabriel, I call myself the chiropractic cleaner because I got the job done and I cleaned things and I made it uh -huh. better. But now what we're doing is we're taking those uh, those learning moments, over 600 chiropractic events, and like you said, we're distilling that down to where now yeah. people have a resource to say, "Wow, I don't have to do this alone anymore." I have somebody that I've have I have the the knowledge from somebody that scheduled in over three thousand people in two and a half years in order to be able to have certainty and selling. That's the most mm -hmm. important part of chiropractic. The threshold of chiropractic will change when the chiropractor learns how to sell. And I think yeah. that that's the hardest part because, like you said, you got into it because of a philanthropic aspect of wanting to be a servant. You got yeah. into it because you saw that it was a good solution to the, the the problems that we're having in society with the medical model. So what what can we do now? Well, we have to go out there and sell, sell, sell. And you have to get yeah. out of your own way and quit feeling uncomfortable with selling the most beautiful product that's readily available to people on every city across this country um we have to go out there and sell the product ma'am yeah yeah and it's all about communication you know and having that having that will help you convey the, the proper communication so you know with with a big idea or you know with a personal story like you know with with mine like that's why i can confidently go up to anyone and just talk to them for hours and hours on end about how much i love chiropractic and what it's done for me and I'm not trying to sell them. I'm just telling them my story. And it, they're just like, oh, my God, I need to try that. It just flows well, naturally. If the story gets told enough, then it becomes a conversation. Yeah. And I think that that's where we're at right now is one of the other things that's always been said is tell the story, tell the story, tell the story. And whether you appreciate telling the story and expecting nothing in return or you appreciate telling the story and saying this is what's going to be your solution to help you. I think that we have to determine how we in, in interject that story and how people receive that story. I think that that's a huge level of, um, you know, certainty within the chiropractic messages. Am I going to tell this person the story because I think it's going to help them? Or am I going to tell them a solution-based model that I know if they come in and get checked that they're going to have a better quality of life, period? Yeah, exactly. I agree. Um, and it's you know like we mentioned before it's not enough to just get the dc title nowadays and but we're but that's a good thing because it challenges us to grow and we're so blessed to have all this technology to be able to do that now you know like like with your podcast for example like using technology to get the message out because now we can reach more people than just you know one-on-one -on -one conversation and that was achieved through consistency Yes. And I think that once we think about the big picture and the big voice of chiropractic, consistency and brand and marketing, um, then you start owning more of the market share when the people out there that need the care aren't confused. And I think yes. that the more that we can uh, fashion the, the conversation and information and the communication um, to live outside the four walls of chiropractic, um, people are going to start becoming more influenced because we are continuously having the information out there for people. And it's not because there's lack of information. It's just lack of consistency in the story and in the information right. and in the brand. Like we have all, yeah. the, we, have, we have all the information out there, bro. We just have to figure out how people will actually use the information. And podcasting is one of those things is I knew that the trend was consistently going more towards audio and that people mm -hmm. want pa people want passive forms of taking in information because right yes. now when people are watching this, thank you everybody that's on watching this. But yeah, you know, you. As, as as people are on watching this, um, they are getting uh, 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 an effect of watching video. So yes. what we could do, everybody out there, is we could strip the audio from this and we could turn this into an audio stream of a podcast. So. That'd be cool. um, you know, one of the things that we, you learn over time is 
uh, maximizing the effect that you have on one thing that you've done. And yes. a podcast a podcast allows you to do that. And that's why we've been able to uh, create value with Cairo Hustles because we've learned how to introduce Cairo Hustle brand and the message of chiropractic through strategic marketing on the social sites and on the major uh, media distributors. So if chiropractic did that as a whole and they said, hey, we're going to put all this effort to share this message and they were consistent, they learned how to manage the social media strategies and they got onto the major streamers, uh, chiropractic mm -hmm. would be chiropractic would be booming with a consistent branded message and really that's what we did with hustle so you know sharing your story with everybody out there tonight is really cool because i know that more people just they they might they might be one step away from becoming a chiropractor and now they yeah. hear your story now now you, they hear your story and they just raise their hand yeah and that's that's so funny because that's basically how it how it happened to me um because prior to wanting to become a chiropractor I started listening to, to different uh, podcasts and videos and the one that like really like sold me was Liam Schubel. I was like, huh, in which sense, like I can do this, you know, I can become a chiropractor myself. And so I, I really thank him a lot. And it was such a blessing to, to meet him. And we talk all the time now. It's, uh, it's, it's funny, you know, eventually you get to a point to where your heroes become your friends and that, that is the greatest blessing. So I, I'm eternally grateful for that. Yeah, Liam, uh, he's done a lot for a lot of young chiropractors' careers, and he's uh, fostered a lot of genius into the chiropractic profession. And he's definitely a part of the cultural conversation of what chiropractic is. And uh, I, I, I know that every profession needs a, a handful of leaders. And I say thank you to Liam for being such a great leader and also being an episode of Cairo Hustle and supporting us uh, through all, all of our missions. Uh, he was in our first film, Chiropractic, the documentary, mm -hmm. and uh, building that relationship with him. Um, makes makes it all greater too for the work that we put in because when you put work in and you become an influencer building people around you as you go through it and building appreciation from them and for them that's what you're going to get when you enter into the next movement of becoming the chiropractor so i know we're coming up on our edge of time together but let's talk future man i know uh yeah. we could probably talk for the next hour on these uh yeah. subjects <laughs> Let's 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 turn the page quickly and let's talk a little bit about um, some goals and some targets that you're going to knock out in 2019. Okay. Um, let's see. 2019. Um, well, I'll I'll still be in school then, but I'm I'm also working on my website and all the. I'm basically like if I were to close my eyes right now, I could literally step into my my office and I know exactly what it looks like and everything, but I have to get it down on paper. That way, it's something concrete I can show. And, you know, get funding for or share with others and get them excited too. So there's that step of getting it from here to here. So I'm going to be working on that a lot. Um, I'm a big futurist. I love technology. Before I got into anything health wise, I, I did a lot of tech work. Uh, so I worked for, you know, I, ISP, internet service providers, ISPs, um, banks. I, I even worked in marketing for other companies. I would design websites and do stuff like that. So I already had that background. So then to be able to bring that into chiropractic is like a no brainer for me. It just, it naturally happens. So, um, I want to really refine and fine tune that, um, for, for my brand that's coming up soon. So, yeah, you got to work on the business and then you can work on your busyness. And I exactly. think that understanding that you are going to be the adjuster, um, my ideal client is a chiropractor and their job title is adjuster. So mm -hmm. you are one of those people that uh, are walking into that future and uh, just uh, nothing but the greatest uh, for you. Um, I, I look forward to, I look forward to seeing your uh, future unfold for you as you have the vision up here. We need to get it down on this now and uh, we need to uh, get you going to the right direction to where you can start making a massive impact on uh, your community and uh, the chiropractic um profession at large. But before we jump off, is there anything I didn't ask you that you'd like to talk to our audience about? Hmm. Um, I'm not sure. Let me let me think on that. And then maybe we can do another <laughs> podcast or another, another video. That'd be cool. Sure. Uh, yeah. So may, maybe catalog some ideas that you would uh, oh. 
that you would uh, maybe propose as topics for me. I know I came off of the cuff and said, hey, we're going to talk about this. Yeah. We're going to transition to this. We're going to go into this. We're going to go into this. And I just appreciate you being so open to share and making time for our audience tonight. And uh, Gabriel, you are somebody that everybody should be paying attention to as you become more of an influencer in the marketplace. And uh, if you guys are interested in getting uh, connected with our sponsor today, chiropracticjobsonline.com, the website is floating underneath our uh, interview here and the logo is above my shoulder there. And Dan Brown, thank you for supporting this episode of the Cairo Hustle live stream, DC to B edition. And uh, Gabriel, thanks once again for being my thank guest. You, and thank you everyone for watching. Yeah, and if you guys are watching this on replay, um, hashtag replay in there. And if you guys are watching this now and you see value in what we've shared, hashtag value. And if you guys do have questions or comments for either one of us, uh, please put those into the chat feed or you can go ahead and send those to us in direct message. So with that being said, uh, is it okay if I close out? Yeah, sounds great. Thank you so much. You guys are just one story away. Keep hustling. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Gabriel. Thank you.